Data loaders provide the extract and load part of the data warehouse build process. The load it module provides a simple and convenient way of defining the parameters by which we want the data loader to operate. So to create a data loader, we click the add button. That provides us with a screen with all the parameters of the basic infrastructure of the data loader to be defined. Now I'm going to load data from the AdventureWorks database. So I firstly need to give the data loader a name. And the name therefore I'm going to give it is AdventureWorks. So I just type in here AdventureWorks. The source type drop list provides me with the ability to define what type of server I'm going to load the data from. Now the data from AdventureWorks will come from SQL Server, but by dropping that list I can select any of the various different source types for this particular data loader. I then need to provide a server name, and since I'm going to load data from the local instance of SQL Server, I'll just type in localhost. The login and password details of the SQL Server login and password leave them blank and Windows Inherited Security will be used. Now I need to identify which database on the SQL Server the data is going to come from, and by clicking the drill button, I can use a drop list to identify the database from which the data is going to come. I then have the option of defining the way that the data load is going to work. By default, the source option is set to full data load. This means that all data will be loaded every time the data loader is executed. By dropping this list, I can change the data loader's execution type to incremental. This will essentially just load data that's changed since the last time the data loader was executed. The next thing I need to do is to define the staging database. The staging database is only used for applying data quality checks. So again, I can use the drill button to drop down a list of the available databases to define which will be the staging. Then lastly, down the bottom here, I just need to identify a prefix that I'm going to apply to all the incoming data tables. Click Save, and the basic infrastructure of the data loader is complete. The next thing I need to do is identify which of the tables from the source system I actually want to load as part of the data load process. So to do that, I simply drill into the details of the data loader again, and now I can see at the bottom of the screen a new area has appeared in the data loader definition that defines the data loader tables that will be included as part of this load process. Here I have a choice of either adding tables individually, selectively, or all. So I'm going to add all the tables, so I just click the Add All button, and Data Academy goes off to the source system to identify the structure of each of the tables, including their fields and primary keys, and adds them into this data loader definition. I don't need the sys diagrams table, so I'm going to exclude that from my data loader simply by removing it. So that's my data loader defined. Now all I have to do is click the Save button, and that data loader now is defined ready for generation. To generate the data loader, I simply click the COGS icon, and after confirmation, we'll actually go off and build all of the infrastructure required for the data loader process. I'm dropped into the event log so I can see what Data Academy is actually doing in the background in terms of its data loader generation process. The event log goes orange to tell me the loader generation is in execution and the entry goes green when it's completed successfully. If there were any errors, it would have gone red, giving me the opportunity to then look in more detail at the log entry to see where the error may have occurred.